Hi everyone, my name is Tyler, this is Aftertouch Audio, and today we are going to be looking at the new um, multi-track format uh, sample library by Audio Kinetic and Boom. So I guess I should kind of start as to what it actually is, and it basically is this. It is a sequence of folders that is independent libraries. So if you go ahead and open up, let's just say, for example, Historical Firearms, which is uh, Boom Library's uh, library, and you open it up, you'll see that you have a bunch of different file folders here. You have a main Reaper project here, which everything is in Reaper, and I would like to say, just before we start this, I am not a Reaper user, so if I do anything in Reaper that is not correct, uh, don't crucify me. Um, but essentially, you have a main Reaper project here, and then you have a series of sub-projects, including handling, pistols, revolvers, just a ton of different stuff here, and this goes with everything. So you open up the footsteps library, and then you go into the sub-projects, you have all of the stuff here, so let's open up the historical firearms main library. Now, this is where I remind people that I just downloaded Reaper for these libraries. I do not know how to use Reaper. I am just working at it like, like I'm working in Nuendo. So let's start by going ahead and actually looking at what these are. And this is really, really cool. This is a feature that I think is unique to Reaper where you have sub projects within a particular DAW. So each of these tracks here are a different project. And if you double click them, Let's just take, um, which one here? Uh, we have, sure, we'll take this one. Okay, so now that we got the sub project open, let's go ahead and have a look at what is actually included in this. So if I zoom right in, you can see that I have access to the full design sound as a multi-track session. So not only can I hear what the sound sounds like in full context, which sounds very, very powerful, I also get access to the individual layers. So if I just go here and solo out all of these, I can get the actual shot layer or what they call the body layer. But not only do I get access to the body layer, I get access to the individual things that, or the individual samples that make up the body layer. That sounds really powerful all on its own. Now, if you want to know how they got that sound, what you can then do is come into here and go into the effects section. And then you get to see everything that goes on to making the sound sound huge. Just a note, Enrage is the only plugin that is being used in these sessions. The reason why is when you actually sign up for uh, Strata, you get Enrage as a free plugin. And that way you can go ahead and look and see exactly everything that, the, everything that they're doing on each individual track, on each individual session, and on each individual library. It's really, really cool. So let's go ahead and hear what this sound sounds like with Enrage and then without Enrage. And without. Big difference. Let's see what they're doing. So to start, I'm gonna give you a quick brief overview of how Enrage works. And the more I'm using Strata, the more and more um, Enrage is becoming one of my all time favorite plugins to use. So you have a triggering module up here as well as a voicing module up here. Then you go ahead and you can have a mod sequencer up here. And this here's where you can go ahead and add things like ADSR, uh, curves, LFOs, envelope followers, transient shapers, ton of different you know modulation sources here. Now, with that being said, on the right side of the plugin, you have access to a bunch of different macros. And as you can see, Boom Library has decked out the macro section for everything for you to go ahead and just tweak and, and fine tune. So you can go ahead and boost things like the high shelf gain, the mid drive mix. You can tame down any of the processing modules that they've gone ahead and done. They've done through here. Then below, you have access to your plugin chain. And then over here, you have access to the actual individual plugin. So if I changed over to soft drive. That module will change. And then over here, you have access to all of the devices. So if you go in here to reverb, you can see the basic verb or the IR verb. Then you have access to your pitch, your modulation, your imaging, your generators, your filters, your dynamics, distortion, delays, gain, inputs and outputs, as well as an analyzer at the very bottom. This plugin is decked out. And then you also have a bunch of different controls down here. And then you also have access to a matrix. This plugin has absolutely everything you could possibly want in one small package. And just in looking at Strata, they've gone ahead and utilized it very, very well. But let's break down this sound in a way that kind of makes sense. So we took all the processing off just by bypassing the overall plugin. But if you want to actually just bypass an individual module, you can do that just by holding down command and just clicking on any of the parameters here. And you can go ahead and remove any of the processing you would like. So to start, they've gone ahead and put in an MS split. So what this is doing is it's taking the mid channel and putting it on the left, and then it's taking the side channels and putting them on the right. 
That way you have two different lines of processing here, and then later on down the road, they've merged the signal back into a single stereo file. But now I can have, I can process my mid channel very uh, separately than my side channels. And as you can see here, just by looking at the naming convention, um, they, it seems like they've processed uh, the mid channel slightly less than they process their side channels. So let's go ahead and see if that's actually accurate. So let's turn on the compressor and we can go ahead and see that it's pretty much just a standard compressor, a relatively slow attack, a relatively fast release with a six to one ratio, or in this case, seven to one ratio. Um, the gain is also set down to minus three, so they've reduced it down a bit, but let's go ahead and turn this on and see what it's doing to the sound. Nice, so just a little bit of compression to get at that top end and control the dynamics a bit. Then from there, the mid channel goes into a basic verb, if you go ahead and click on that, um, it looks like we have the size parameter up here. Nice, it adds a little bit of space. But note down here, we have a purple little um, number four. And that is your macro controls. So they've gone ahead and actually assigned this to a macro over here, which that now you can go ahead and control how much verb you want. So let's play with that a bit. So I can make my gun sound like it's indoors, or I can just add a little bit of verb to, put, uh, to elongate that tail. And I'm assuming they're using it to help blend everything together, which is a really nice way to do that. Then we go ahead and move into a strong drive. And now I would like to point out this module is called a wave shaper. It's not called strong drive. What they've done is they've, is they've gone ahead and renamed it here for you. So when you're looking at these plugin chains, you get a very clear look just by looking at it, what's happening. And as you can see, it is um, heavily uh, saturating this signal. So this should actually be a drastic change from our last um, plugin. So again, before and after. Nice, big, distorted, mm, beefy, love it. So now that we've gone ahead and gone down the mid channels, let's go down the side channels, which seems to be less processing, but it looks to be a bit more extreme. So we're starting off with a nice soft drive and there's that little purple number three again, which means we can play with the third macro here and we can adjust how that sounds. But let's go ahead and hear it with just the soft drive without and then with. Really, really, really punchy center with a nice distorted crunch and then it just opens right up with the wide. That is such a nice sound. Let's play with number uh, three for a second. It's acting more like a stereo winder. That is really, really neat. So we're gonna put that back down to where it kinda was. And then from there, we have a 400 Hertz boost. So this should be a nice load of mid-range boost. Um, and it looks like they're boosting it by about 70, yeah, by 7.5 dB uh, as a peak boost. Uh, da, 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 da. Neat, okay, so let's give that there a try. Without and with. Nice little low punch. So from there, we go ahead and merge the signal back into a normal uh, stereo track, and then we're just running the sound through a soft clipper. Massive punch. Nice, big, beefy sound. And then we go ahead and have um, the post gain as well that you can go ahead and automate via a macro number five. Now that is just one channel across all of these channels. There is so much to dive into here, and I just touched the very first layer. If I come over here, I can then go ahead and open up this one, and I can see a very similar processing chain here with a one kilohertz boost. If I come into here to the burst crack, I can see that there is a completely different processing chain that I can now study. And if I open up this one here, the bullet whiz by, it is another completely different processing gene that I can study. And that is just on one section of the sound. So there is so much to learn in this small little formula, but what I can do uh, is actually play you each individual part of this sound so that you can actually hear how we get to the full sound in the end.
Here's something I just noticed. You also have access to additional layers as well. So let's go ahead and listen to what those sound like. Nice little dry fire sound. So let's build this sound up now layer by layer, including everything. So let's start with the initial transient. It is so nice to see a session that is so clean, so organized, with so much detail, and then to see an entire sample library done this way. There's so much you can learn just from following these presets and studying how they layered things. And here's the, th here's the kicker. If you go into their actual uh, sub-projects, for example, and you actually open these up, so you can go into uh, the Revolver Remington. Okay, well, what they have actually in here? Well, if you go into the media, you can actually see every single sample that goes into this. So you notice it's all from the historical firearm stuff. There's no external samples here. There's no external bits. There are some uh, samples here, uh, or there are some guns uh, under the media that might use their brand new uh, one library. And not only that, they are releasing stuff all the time. This is such a cool project to work on. And then what you can do is you can change these presets. You can do anything you want. I can edit them. I can add my own plugins. I can take samples away. I can add samples. It is a totally modular library and it is something that you don't really see sample libraries doing at all. Aside from these companies. Anyways, I hope you have enjoyed that video overview of Strata. It is it was something that I didn't understand before I buying it, and I was just really, really curious about what it actually was. Boom Library is not sponsoring me to do this. This was something that I just was like, I'm curious about what this actually is. And after buying it, I have to say, it is so cool to see these really, really, really pro sessions broken down in such a pro format. It is really, really cool. Will it convert me over to Reaper? Probably not. But it is cool to see.